Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make ammonium methyl sulfate. For this we are going to use 97.1 grams of sulfamic acid and 200 milliliters of methanol which is a huge overkill. For our own safety we are going to be putting on safety goggles and nitrile gloves and besides that because methanol is toxic we are working in a very well ventilated area. The 97.1 grams of sulfamic acid were added to a round bottom flask containing a stir fish. In theory only 40.5 milliliters of methanol would be needed to fully react with the sulfamic acid. In reality this wouldn't give a good yield, therefore excess methanol is used to act as a solvent. We started off with 160 milliliters of methanol, I thought this might be enough, but we ended up using 200 milliliters in total. It would have been ideal to start off with the 200 milliliters of methanol and not to add 40 milliliters later on. The flask was then placed into a heating mantle and a reflux condenser was attached. Water would hydrolyze our product, therefore a calcium chloride filtering tube was attached to the top. In order to begin with the actual preparation, the reflux condenser was flushed with water and heating and stirring were turned on. Soon after turning on the heating mantle, we were able to see a beautiful vapor front of methanol climbing up the reflux condenser. The reaction taking place is the following. Methanol reacts with sulfamic acid to form ammonium methyl sulfate directly. The reaction unfortunately takes a very long time and we ended up refluxing for about four and a half hours. The reaction is finished once you can see no more sulfamic acid in the reaction flask. The 40 additional milliliters of methanol were added during this refluxing process. After no more sulfamic acid was visible, heating and stirring were turned off and the apparatus was allowed to cool down. As you can see, even though it's still boiling, there's no solid left in the flask. The moment it was cold enough, the flask was stoppered and placed into the freezer for two hours. And here we are two hours later, a crystalline mass appeared, but it's still liquid enough so a filtration can be performed. I always opt for vacuum filtration because it's faster and I'm lazy. The flask and the product was rinsed with about 50 milliliters of ice cold methanol. In total we pulled the vacuum for about 10 minutes to get rid of all of the methanol. Once dry, the product was transferred to a pre-weight storage bottle. Why pre-weight? Well, if you weigh the bottle in advance, you can simply weigh it again and you're going to know how much product you collected. This makes calculating the yield significantly easier. Some product decided to crystallize out in the filtration flask. We might be able to filter this again, but I decided against it because we already connected enough product. It would be possible to recover the solvents by distilling it and you have to be careful while doing this because at high temperatures methyl ammonium sulfate rearranges to form methylamine sulfate. Because there's leftover ammonium methyl sulfate in the methanol it might not even be a good idea to burn it at all but I don't care, just don't repeat this. So now we are left with the product, but how can I actually prove that we made ammonium methyl sulfate and that we didn't just recrystallize the sulfamic acid? Well, let's hold both of the test tubes into this Bunsen burner. This is normal sulfamic acid and as you can see, a lot of white thick smoke is created. In the test tube on the left, we have some of our homemade ammonium methyl sulfate. When ammonium methyl sulfate is held into the flame of the Bunsen burner, you still see smoke, but the smoke isn't as thick as with the sulfamic acid. I didn't hold the test tubes into the flames of the Bunsen burner for no reason, but I told you earlier on that ammonium methyl sulfate rearranges at high temperatures to form methylamine sulfate. And of course you can test if methylamine sulfate was actually created or not. A small amount of sodium hydroxide was added to each of the test tubes, followed by a small amount of distilled water. When methylamine sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide, free base methylamine and sodium sulfate are formed. A piece of pH strip was placed at the top of each of the test tubes and the test tubes were heated. We started off with the methylamine test tube and as you can see the pH strip turned a dark blue. Pure methylamine is an alkaline gas and the blue in the pH strip therefore indicates that we actually made ammonium methyl sulfate. As a comparison we also held the test tube containing the sulfamic acid and sodium hydroxide into the flame of the Bunsen burner and the pH strip stayed the same. In total 96.5 grams of product were collected and this corresponds to yield of about 75%. 
the yields may be increased by leaving the flask in the freezer for longer, by carefully distilling off the methanol in order to avoid decomposition, or by not being lazy and just discarding what was left in the filtered solution. And that's that for today's preparation. If you liked this video, make sure to drop me a like. If you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe. As always, I have to thank all of my Patreons. You guys make it possible to film even more expensive projects and really, I appreciate it. If you want to become a Patreon too, make sure to check the link in the description. Anyways, I wish all of you a great day. Until next time.